have the lost ashes of the red heifer dating all the way back to Moses and Aaron and the first red heifer sacrifice. Have they been located? I bet you didn't even know that they existed or how they're linked to the modern red heifers. And it like a crazy twist of fate, the man in Israel right now caring for the red heifers in the town of Shiloh, you probably know it as Shiloh, was originally part of the archaeological dig for those ancient ashes. So we have an incredible story today, and we're going to be hearing directly from that man who knows both sides of the story, the modern ashes and the ancient ashes. That last November, we were working with three archaeologists to open up the cave beneath the spices and another cave that I'll talk about a little later, why this is important. Because of the Gaza situation, everything was stopped. So here, while I'm waiting to go back to help find the ancient ashes in Qumran area, against all odds, I find myself taking care of the potential new ones. <laughs> and this link that goes all the way back to Moses, Aaron, and even the prophets Jeremiah, Haggai, and Zechariah, is just incredible because it's linked to today, modern Israel and the red heifers. It's one story. Now, if you're new to this red heifer thing, none of this seems to make sense. So let me explain why it's biblically important. The one minute version. In Numbers 19, God commanded Moses to sacrifice a perfect kosher red cow or red heifer as a means to cleanse the Israelites from ritual impurity. Once pure, they could approach a holy God. This ceremony was symbolic of the once and for all sacrifice Jesus would make on the cross. So Christians today are pure. And through Jesus and what he did for us, we can approach the throne of God without fear. However, Jews who don't have faith in Jesus are not pure. Without the purity that comes from the ashes of a red heifer, they don't feel pure enough to even walk on the area of the Temple Mount where the temple was and will be in the future. And some believe they aren't pure enough to bring the Tamid sacrifices on the Temple Mount. You know, the ones that are going to start again in the near future? The very ones that the Antichrist takes away, as we learn in Daniel 9.27. So the ashes of a burnt red heifer mixed with pure spring water sprinkled on the priests and worshipers are necessary to begin those sacrifices, build a third temple, and essentially, they're necessary for the end times. So how do these ancient ashes fit into all this? Well, after a sacrifice was done and the people were cleansed, they didn't just throw the ashes away. They would keep using them year after year. But as the ashes got lower, they realized another sacrifice would be needed. And when that one was completed, they mixed some of the old with the new. And in that way, some of those ashes would go all the way back to Moses and Aaron. This made them incredibly valuable ashes. But about 2,500 years ago, those valuable ashes were threatened. The prophet Jeremiah and his scribe Baruch stood on the walls of the city of Jerusalem. They watched the Babylonian armies encircle the city. They knew the city would be taken soon. Jeremiah received the word from God to take the holy items from the temple of the Lord and hide them from the Babylonians. These things included the breastplate or ephod of the high priest, the temple incense, and the ashes of the red heifer. But he hid them out and away from the city. He buried them and he recorded the location of the ashes on a scroll made of copper. And he had five men, including the other prophets, Haggai and Zechariah, you know them from the Bible too. He had them record these locations on five like pieces of that scroll. And that scroll was found in 1950 with the Dead Sea Scrolls. Now you're ready for the rest of the story. It's a big mystery. It's a verbal treasure map. Yeah. Uh, that was found in 1950 with the Dead Sea Scrolls. Yes. I think in the last day of the dig of the French excavation. 
And yeah. it's now in Jordan, in Amman. Correct. Yeah. And I've seen it. Oh, okay. But it's spectacular what could be uh, buried. Yes. Now, Larry Borntrager is the man who's caring for the heifers. Jim Scudder is the gentleman doing the interview. He's from Ingrace Now Ministries. The late Vendel Jones is the archaeologist who began the dig for the ashes of the heifer. And Stephen Welp from this ministry, friend of Vendel Jones, let me know about this interview. Uh, I never know quite where to start. The easy thing is uh, I was here on a planned dig back in November. I dig with used to be Vendel Jones, you know, looking for the ashes of the red heifer, the ancient ones. Uh -huh. And in 92, we found 1,500 pounds of spices in a cave that the Copper Scrolls describes. Wow. And it says beneath the spices, there's a purification. And I always, I have a sample of the spices if you're interested in oh. seeing that. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are they all still pure enough? Or? No, okay. there's two definitely not. Okay. Oh, here they come. Hi. How are you? That's the one with the... With the bump? This is two dots. Two dots. Oh, yeah, I see the two dots. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I, I do know that Goldie here, see those little warts on the side? Hey, Goldie, yeah, okay. Yeah, she's okay. not qualified. Either. Okay. So there's a few things already that's sort of qualified a couple, but, yeah. you know, that's it'll, it'll be some time. To so actually what they plan to do now is to breed these artificial insemination. Okay. So that in the future, there might be more. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Got it. Good. Yeah. So this could be the breeding females for an eventual qualification once they're ready. Okay. Yeah, you see the, the warts right there on the side of her. Hey, how are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three of them still qualify. Two of them definitely. Third sort of had some problems that they're just sort of watching, but it wouldn't disqualify them if she got it. over it. Yeah, got it. You can sort of see sometimes they have watery eyes. Okay. And yeah, it's just something they're watching. So okay. So I'm sure you heard what I heard, that two of the heifers are still completely qualified. So the question you're probably having is, well, why aren't they going forward with the sacrifice to move forward with possibly building a third temple? Well, you also heard at the beginning that the digs are stopped. And of course, the sacrifices are stopped for the same reason, the situation that occurred in Israel last year. And they're afraid if they do a sacrifice now, a similar situation might occur. So it's a political reason that they're not moving forward. Let's get back to the interview. So going back to your question, how did I get involved? I was involved in an archaeological project down at Qumran using the Copper Scroll. And in 92, we found 1,500 pounds of spices that we discovered after we did a quick test that it was the spices that you read about in Exodus 30. And we did a couple scientific tests, paleobotanists, and it comes out exactly the recipe of the spices. So it says beneath the spices, there is a purification for the ashes of the red heifer. So since 1988, I've been involved in those digs to uh, try to find the ancient, what they call the Kalal, because if you read about it in Numbers 19, they divide it in three parts. One part to use the ashes, one part in a safe place in the camp, and one for future generations. And that's what we are expecting. And it's speculation until you find something. But at least we know this isn't speculation anymore, so we're pretty certain beneath that we might find the ancient ashes because historically they always mixed in the ancient old ones with the new heifer all the way through. So what I find interesting personally, just my own opinion, my own involvement, that last November we were working with three archaeologists to open up the cave beneath the spices and another cave that I'll talk about a little later why this is important. Because of the Gaza situation, everything was stopped. So here while I'm waiting to go back, to help find the ancient ashes in Qumran area, against all odds, I find myself taking care of the potential new ones. <laughs> so after 2,000 years to be involved in something that's sort of lining up, I just say, hmm. When the paleobotanist added the acid to see the, uh, the ingredients, it released the aroma so strong oh. that he said his shop vent pulled the aroma out and the tree next to the shop for about a month later 
when he would come out there, he could smell the aroma come down off of the trees. Wow. And uh, they say when they were burning it, like in Jerusalem, the women wear, wouldn't wear perfume because, you know. I happen to know that those spices that were found by Vendel Jones and by Larry are now in the hands of the Temple Institute, the guys who are planning on rebuilding the temple and reinstituting temple sacrifices. Let's get back to the interview. The age of these heifers right now? My understanding is they'd be old enough for the process, but Whoa. whenever that happens, when it happens, where it happens, that's, I'll leave that up to the other <laughs> people involved, so. Did you notice that he paused when he said where it will happen? Here, I want you to listen to this again because he was sort of hesitant when he said that. Yeah. The age of these heifers right now? My understanding is they'd be old enough for the process, but Whoa. whenever that happens, when it happens, where it happens, that's, I'll leave that up to the other <laughs> people involved, so. And the reason that he was hesitant is because the, the Jewish authorities in Jerusalem have always said that the sacrifice has to take place on the Mount of Olives, very public place, very visible place. But you know, the original sacrifice took place there in Shiloh, right where these heifers are being stored. And the idea is perhaps in secret one day, far away from the public eye, they may do one of these sacrifices to produce the ashes of the red heifer before they are no longer of the correct age. They're going to be disqualified when they're three years old, and that's going to be in October. So they have very limited time. I got a feeling, based on what I just heard from him, an insider, that that is still a possibility. They're waiting because they'd like to do it the way they want. But to me, that sounds like they have this other plan in mind. We'll see. Because the Copper Scroll starts out in the desolations of the Valley of Acor, mm -hmm. that puts you a certain place. Right. Between Jericho and Sakaka, that gives you your, what I call your X. Okay. By the Wadi Hakipa, that's your Y. Okay. I'm sure that just sounded like gibberish to you. But let me tell you what a few things are. The Valley of Acor is the Jordan Valley in the area of the Dead Sea. From Jericho to Sakaka is telling you it's on the uh, western side of the Dead Sea. Uh, runes is telling you it's probably the Qumran runes. And the Wadi, like he said, is that Y coordinate that gives you the uh, east-west point, and that puts you in Qumran. So that, that's what he's talking about right, there. Okay. And then it describes the Mahalot, you know, climbing up the cave of the column. And in 89, a friend of ours that was reading the Copper Scroll said there should be a cave opening at a certain place, according to the Copper Scroll. And we looked all over the place. We couldn't find anything. So four of us were on top of this hill. Three of us had given up. And the fourth guy said, hey, guys, I fell into a hole. Huh. So we went up and looked. And we looked in the front. And you could not see mm. that there was anything there. But they started digging from the top of the hole, the top of the hill. And it came out the front. And here it ended up to be like an 18-foot cave opening. So we started cleaning that out in 92. And then at the bottom of the cave, we come across this wow. stuff and it looked like coffee grounds in the bedrock. And so that can't be too important because it didn't have any smell. And we were tossing this stuff off the side of the hill. Well, in archaeological dig, if you do find something different, you usually put it in a plastic bag, mark your quadrants, and mm -hmm. afterwards you look at it. Well, somebody happened to put that plastic bag with this material out in the rock in the hot sun and the hot sun released the aroma. And one of the volunteers opened it up and says, this smells like cinnamon. Wow. And the archaeologists just hold everything. So they quickly sent in a sample to get it tested. And Rick called back and says, those are the spices, the katorid of the temple. So then we started saving it. And I measured it all. It was 1,500 pounds. So the reason I point that out is that quite often you hear people say, well, the Copper Scroll is just a hoax or whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, if you think about it, way back then, you didn't go down to a hardware store and get a roll of copper. It had to be processed. It had to be so. It's not a hoax. It, it's a <laughs> it's a big deal because of how hard that would be to make that scroll. Yes. Yeah. So the main point was, unless one object is found in the copper scroll, 
then it makes the rest of it realize that it's 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 for right. I would say plausible for sure. Yeah. So that's where fascinating this comes in. You should see the Jewish friends every morning. Those who repeat their prayers, they repeat the recipe of the incense. Mm. I'm going to hand this to my Jewish friends and say that's the incense recipe that you've been repeating for thousands of years, and it's wow. Mm. <laughs> you know, there's certain things that have been thought about, but when you see people here from all the nations seeing actual red heifers at Shiloh, then when you read Genesis 49, you can read it a little bit different Interesting. than I did two weeks ago, put it that way. So, yeah. And where were you a uh, dairy farmer? Uh, Northern Indiana. Okay. So here's a question for you. Was it God himself who may have delayed the sacrifice of the red heifer? In order that Larry and his friends can find the ancient ashes of the red heifer to mix with the new ashes of the red heifer. <laughs> it's certainly something to think about. And Larry and his friends know from the Copper Scroll where those ashes are located. They're beneath the incense that they've already found in one of those caves. So we could be that close to finding those ashes. Maybe. It's something to pray about. Now, you know, the ashes aren't the only thing found in those caves, according to the scrolls, things that haven't been located yet. And in a future episode of this channel, we'll talk about what some of those other things are. But let's say the sacrifice does take place on the Mount of Olives. Are you aware that we know right where that's going to happen? Click right here to keep watching and find out that special location on the Mount of Olives and the special efforts that they've taken to make that spot just right. I mean, it's going to be amazing if it takes place in sight of the former temple's location on the Temple Mount. I mean, it will be an amazing day. Till then, this is Nelson, and I'll see you there.